What's up guys? So I just did a fresh install of the newly released RAS BMC RC5 and I've got to say first impressions are it's really really good. Um, I'm using the HDMI set thing so I can use my controller to wait to yeah to control. Um, it's just so much quicker there's so much to talk about. I'm going to put a link in the description to the Rasp BMC website which shows you the change log because there's so much to talk about. Um, I mean the first thing I noticed and I was quite happy about is you can now install this to a USB. So if you have a USB stick uh, plugged in or a USB hard drive plugged in when you install this, um, it will automatically install it to the USB drive instead of the um, SD card. Now you still need the SD card to kind of initially boot but then you can use, then it uses the USB drive to run it and on the USB drive it's a lot quicker. You can see how it's just flicking through these menus here with ease, look how quick that loaded, much quicker than before. Um, it's just a lot lot faster and it's really really nice. Um, you don't have to have it on USB, if you don't have a USB plugged in it will just use your SD card. So, best of both worlds there really. Um, let me talk about some other stuff. Raspberry settings, they've added some nice features in here. So if we click into here you can do all that normal stuff. And system configuration, you can add if you've bought them the VC1 and MPEG2 codec, you can just put that in there and then you'll be able to de decode, hardware decode those codec files, I haven't actually got them. Some other settings, now this bit here is interesting, it's system performance profile, it's the turbo mode if you haven't heard of it for Raspberry MC and the Raspberry Pi. Um, they are having some issues with it though, being that if you run it from just the SD card, if you run it faster than fast, you will get SD card corruption and it just won't start and you'll have to start the whole thing again, so it's a bit of pain. Now I've got mine on the USB stick and I've had it on fast for a few hours and it hasn't been a problem. Now the default when it starts is it, say, it says it's on fast but it's only the CPU that's overclocked to 800 so you have to actually go in and set it to fast to be turbo boosted to actually fast and you can see in my advanced settings I haven't changed this but this is what it is now. The CPU is overclocked to 840, core overclocked 350, GPU 253 and you can move these around. I haven't tried this super which I'm sure will overvolt and everything. Normal, fast, super. Um, read the read the stuff on the website but the turbo mode feature was released by the Raspberry Pi Foundation themselves so it doesn't void your warranty even though it may overvolt. The reason for this is it kind of schedules it. It doesn't always like stay at the highest frequency. Saying that however on their website, Raspberry MC's website, they did want to use CPU governors. However, due to some issues with the turbo mode, they haven't been able to use the governors, which is a bit of a pain because the CPU governors basically means it reduces the clock frequency and scales upwards when necessary. So it reduces the heat, prolongs life, you know, all that stuff. Um, but that's off for now because because of the SD card corruption stuff, so hopefully that will come in a future update. We will see. I mean, there's, there's loads of stuff. Obviously, it's faster due to being on a USB stick and the fact that they've updated the kernel. You know, they've done all the little tweaks that just make it a lot, a lot quicker. So, no, I'm getting two things. One, I used to run it from the SD card. Now I'm running it from USB and it's the updated version and everything else. So... You also get, if you go to video, you can see you get a GPU temperature now, which you didn't get before. So you can see how hot it's getting. Um, 48, I don't know, usually 48 is alright, I suppose. I mean, I don't really know. I know my laptop gets, on, gets up to like 80 degrees, but who knows if that's alright. We'll see. I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, video playback is the same as it was. Pretty good still. I'll show you a movie. It's actually quicker, I suppose. You can just see how it's loading 
these pictures, how quick it can change the pictures. It's so much quicker, and that's due to the kernel and obviously the USB stuff. Look how quickly it just gets through that. I mean, Wrath of the Titans, I'll try because it's my highest bitrate one. This used to take at least like 30 seconds to start before. Um, I mean, that's already so much quicker to start. And it is starting. And it has also changed the refresh rate to the preferred 24 hertz if the TV can support it. So that's all working. Smooth playback, really, really nice. Much faster to load stuff. Um, I've installed the program stuff, like the program files, like NaviX. They all work. I won't go into that because I'm not sure I'm allowed to. Um, but that all works. TV shows, I'll show you my TV shows. Again, you can just see how quick it loads the pictures and the blurb stuff. Walking Dead. Great show if you haven't seen it, by the way. I'll show you how quick this one loads as well. I mean, I used it as my media center before and I loved it. And it's just it's just even better now. Um, you can see again, it's loaded. Bugs chittering. No problems with playback. Good stuff. Uh, what else can I talk about? Some people are excited about the for, for the Record plugin. So PBR support now supports For the Record TV backends thanks to some hard work from Red F. I'm not completely sure what that means, but some people on the forums are pretty excited. So if that's you, apparently that's now supported. There's, there's so much stuff I could talk about here, but um, it's just really, really nice. Oh uh, yeah, the web interface is enabled by default now, so if you don't have like a keyboard and stuff on initial setup, you can just log straight into it from your browser and control it. There's a remote control and all sorts of stuff there. Um, let's have a look at the settings, see if anything's different in the settings. Again, you can just see how quick it loads now. I didn't think this was it before. Okay. I haven't had any problems with the SD card corruption, but like I said again, it's um, I'm actually running it off the USB stick and it's here, so that's another reason why it's much quicker. Uh, they've also added X FAT file system format, that's quite good. So now Raspberry MC now supports X FAT, so if you're a Windows user, that'll be good for you. It's now possible to write to attached drives through FTP, you couldn't do that before, now you can do it through home pi media mounting is now completely persistent across reboots i'm really excited to like the updates when they're going to get the cpu governors in use and things like that because i don't know i just like that sort of stuff i think it'd be cool i think right now it's obviously just using a fixed frequency so mine will be fixed at like 840 because that's what my overclock was um It'll be more useful when the CPU governors, so it doesn't stress it as much for no reason. Um, but yeah, the turbo mode thing has helped. It is quicker and it's just a great thing to have. It says on the website, by default, only your CPU is overclocked to 800 megahertz. So you have to specifically choose fast for it to overclock it, use the turbo overclock. New kernel, IO optimizations, Improved update system, they use MDM, MD5 checks and improved logging to ensure there is no such thing as brickable updates. Drop bear replaces OpenSSH, don't really know what that is. Improved Raspberry settings I've showed you. Now some people have had issues when just you can upgrade it from your RC4 to RC5. I didn't bother because I haven't got that much stuff on here. You can upgrade it, just follow the instructions on the website that I'll put in the description. Um, but I just did a clean install because I think it just works better with a clean install, you know, you don't get any of the stupid issues. But, you know, I'm just blown away by the speed. I mean, it's so quick now. It just wasn't this quick before, and that's due to the USB and the overclocking that's now allowed. I mean, it's just a lot more usable, a lot more like my laptop's XBMC, really, really nice stuff. 
You can see it doesn't even slow down when it has to load those file, load the uh, album art and stuff like that, you know. So, yeah, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you want to see anything else, please let me know. I'll see you guys later.